and I have never worn my hair up in a video until today. What are we thinking? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You rock that up, do. If you're not a millennial, you might not know. Woo! Hey guys, it's Emmy. I'm a certified nutritionist and the creator of the Slim on Starch program. Yes, that is the new name for it. And the next program is starting August 16th. So you can click the link in the down bar if you want to apply to the Slim on Starch program so that you can lose and maintain your ideal weight on a plant-based diet while eating as much food as you want. In this video, I'm gonna be going over everything that I ate on vacation, whether or not I stayed on track, and what I'm doing now that I'm back from vacation. Honestly, honey, is I think this video might be a game changer for you. If you're the type of person that comes back from vacation just feeling like a balloon and feeling guilty and blah and feeling like you need to drink celery juice until the year 2050, then this is the video for you because this really might change your overall mindset and allow you to go on vacation and actually come back feeling better than when you started. Also a little disclaimer, as always, if you are doing something that is different from what I am doing, work it honey keep doing you you work that up do but i'm just here to share what i'm doing to perhaps inspire people if they're looking to make a little bit of a change but like i said if what you're doing is working for you own it okay let's keep talking so where did i go on vacation well I'm from the Boston area and every year my mom and I rent a cottage down on the Connecticut shoreline and it's just the two of us. It's very quiet. We spend every day on the beach. We're right on the beach and then every night for dinner we eat on the porch overlooking the ocean and it is just calm, quiet. It's just the two of us and it is wonderful. We do this every summer for one week. Okay, so we walk in. Here's our favorite thing ever, life's little instructions. And then this is the room that I stay in. So here is my room. Then across the hall is the bathroom. Here's our cute little bathroom. Then we walk in, got my potatoes. <laughs> we have the little kitchen. This is mom's room. So mom stays in here. And if she wanted a guest, the guest could be on top. And then we have a little dining area right here. There's a little bar over there. The living area, don't know who that is. And then, like I said, the kitchen. So cute, everything you could ever need. And then when we walk out, we have the porch onto the beach. So it's this adorable, adorable area right here. And this is different from last year. That is a new table. Now, traditionally, I find that people think of vacation as the time to go off the diet and they can drink all they want and eat all they want and escape from the everyday diet mentality. And then you come back from vacation and first off, there's nothing more depressing than leaving vacation. But when you combine that with feeling gross and bloated and blech and regretful of what you've done over vacation, that's just horrible. The thought of feeling that way at the end of vacation, like that's a no for me. I really don't want to do that. I always, with everything in life, start with the end in mind, especially when it comes to vacation. And there's nothing worse than that day after Christmas feeling. There's nothing worse than leaving vacation. And I don't want to feel disgusting and gross at the end of my vacation. And I don't want to be like, oh my God, it's, it's an entire year until I can have this freedom and this party and this eat whatever I want again. I don't want to feel like that. I don't want to be dreading going back to my everyday life. What I do want is to come back from the vacation feeling refreshed and energized and relaxed. I want the vacation to be like a recharge of my batteries and I come back and I feel good and I'm excited to be eating what I'm eating day in and day out and I don't want to be mourning the vacation. So how do I do that? Well, I have three tips for you, honey. The first is to create a life and a diet that you love. 
If you feel like you need a break from your diet and you dread your diet, then it shouldn't be the diet that you're on. And when I say diet, I don't mean crash diet. I mean the food that goes into your mouth. So develop a diet that's sustainable for you. And if it's something that you cannot sustain and you're just like thinking of that one week that you're on vacation, then something's gotta change because that is setting you up for the binge restrict on the diet, off the diet mentality, which is my next tip, which is to get rid of the on the diet versus off the diet mentality and develop a system. Develop something that you can sustain for the long term and have a bird's eye view to the way you eat as opposed to, did you see, there's a fly. Look at your diet and your lifestyle with a bird's eye view and look at the times when you're going to have more indulgent meals, maybe a little bit more sodium, relaxing a little bit. That is how we should look at this as opposed to I'm off the diet, I'm on the diet. I'm on the diet, 100% clean, 100% perfect, whatever it is that you follow. And then when I go vacation on vacation, who cares? I'm eating whatever the heck I want. That is a very black and white unhealthy mindset that sets you up for being so bingy and just like not even in in touch with your eating on vacation and then when you get back it's like depressing and you're just nose to the grindstone I hate this I hate this I hate this one's the next vacation that sounds like such a sad horrible lifestyle that I don't want you honeys to live instead I want you to be excited and refreshed and love vacation just as much as you love your everyday life and your everyday diet and then my last little tip is to start with the end in mind so think about the day when you're packing up to leave the vacation how do you want to feel on that day do you want to feel bloated regretful like you need a detox for the next eight years like you need to go to soul cycle for the next 24 hours seven days a week you don't want to feel like that i don't want to feel like that i want to feel refreshed i want to feel excited about getting back to my everyday life i want to feel good and relaxed and i don't want to be mourning vacation or mourning and longing for the food that i was eating on vacation that just sounds sad to me so start with the end in mind i want to feel refreshed and energized what do i need to do to get there so i'll tell you what i did to get there i'll tell you what i did so that when i left vacation what was it four or five days ago i felt good and refreshed and I felt like I'm really excited to go on this vacation next year but I'm also really excited for the next 51 weeks of my normal life. So I eat a whole foods plant-based diet and it is free of salt, sugar, and oil. I eat starches, vegetables, fruits, and legumes all whole foods. I'm a whole foods girl. When I'm on vacation, the only thing that really changes is that I don't worry about salt too much because we're getting restaurant food and we're getting takeout food, mainly from two restaurants. It ended up being restaurants that can do vegan and oil free. Otherwise, my diet is pretty much the same and I'm going to show you guys everything that I had. Now you might be saying you're on vacation. Don't you want to have the indulgent stuff and the vegan junk food and the Oreos and the ice cream? Isn't that a treat to you? honeys when you see what I had sitting overlooking the ocean with my mom not having to make the food myself this gorgeous display a huge sushi platter a huge plate of Indian food overlooking the ocean with my best friend who I love is that not a treat? And to, the biggest treat of all is the fact that at the end of the dinner, we feel amazing. We don't feel gross. We don't feel bloated. We don't feel hung over the next morning. The next morning, I would get up and go for a run and I would knock that run out of the water. I felt incredible. If that's not a treat, then I don't know what is. So let me show you everything that we had. The first night of vacation, we went to an all-you-can-eat sushi place. There are two types of people in this world. Mom takes out the wine, just, I'm like, all right, we're going. She pulls out the wine, I go, are you about to take a swig of that? She goes, no, I'm pouring myself a roti. Here's my roti, my oatmeal, before we go get sushi. <laughs> we are here at all-you-can-eat sushi, we are very excited and so we have our little sheet and we're gonna fill it out so we got all of our stuff lined up and yeah we're gonna get some spinach oshinko cucumber um wait did you say you wanted asparagus yeah sorry all right so we've got some stuff so we got our spinach cucumber 
the Fuja Maki. I asked for like some of the stuff not in here, but it's in here, so I'm making mom eat that. <laughs> and then we have the Oshinko, and we have more coming, so we are gonna start here. We've got more sushi, so some Fudo Maki and some more Oshinko, and I ordered some more, but we're gonna bite by bite. All right, here's the last little bit. So after that, I officially became obsessed with all-you-can-eat sushi. For 20 bucks, I was getting sushi up the yin-yang. And they were able to make it for us with just the plain steamed white rice. So there was no sushi vinegar added to it, so there was no sugar added to it. And I like to eat it with liquid aminos um, so that I'm not getting too, too much salt. Of course, the Oshinko is a fermented vegetable, so they do use salt to ferment the Oshinko. So that was the only really bit of salt that I had. Um, but other than that, totally oil-free, sugar-free, whole foods plant-based, baby. All right, and then the next night, my brother showed up, surprisingly. We didn't think he was gonna come, but my brother is such a sushi guy. So you know what we did. Same place, different night. <laughs> so we're back at All You Can Eat Sushi, but now we have a guest. It's healthy brother. <laughs> He's eating his mushroom soup, and let's get one, one bite. Everybody knows the rules. One bite. What are we rating it, Ty, out of 10? Honestly, it's amazing. Out of 10, eight and a half. Oh, wow. We got all the sushi again. Ty, what's in yours? Cucumber, avocado, crab, salmon, and I think that's it. What sashimi did you get? I got the regular raw salmon sashimi and then the smoked salmon sashimi. Oh, there's two different pieces there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, two different. Ah. One smoked one regular. Would you look at that? All right, and then came the time that I had to go visit my favorite lady, Manju. Manju hooks it up with vegan, oil-free Indian food. Let me show you everything that we got. All right, guys, I am so excited because right now I am headed to pick up Indian food for my girl, Manju. I love Manju. She is the sweetest woman in the world. I met her last summer two summers ago um when i asked if she could make oil-free indian indian vegan food for us um and she was so so sweet we exchanged phone numbers um when i was in australia she checked up on me she's just so wonderful such a wonderful woman and i texted her yesterday i was like hey i think we're gonna pick up tomorrow for food and she goes i'll be in the kitchen at 4 p.m to make sure that everything is perfect for you guys usually i have my chefs cook everything but i want to make sure everything is oil free for you and we are on the phone this morning and she just so wonderful so I'm gonna go see her I'm very excited to see her and I will bring you guys along hi Emmy hi guys so I'm here with Manju who is my favorite Indian chef in the world thank you and she hooked it up so what do we have we have oil free goodies oil free vegan yeah can you tell us what we have in here this is fenugreek leaves cooked with garlic ginger tomatoes uh, carrots and potatoes. Mm -hmm. This is a new speciality just for you. Oh, you're the best. Yeah, I don't know if you want to take a picture of this. This is the grilled vegetables. Oh my goodness, that looks so good. Oil free, of course. And everything is vegan, of course. Oh, so excited. And then we have a bunch of other stuff in there that yeah. we will explore. You oh, you did the lasuni. I give you only one order. Try <laughs> like I'm telling you, I'm going to be obsessed with it. This is like my favorite. Or the mushroom is so good too. I'm so excited. You're the best. If this is not health in one photo, I don't know what is. This just looks to me like this meal is alive. There's just so much health in here. So we have the basmati rice. This is sag mushroom, so it's mushroom and spinach. Grilled veggies with no oil. She said she used lemon juice. Banyan barta, which is eggplant and peas. More sag mushroom. Aloo gobi, which is aloo means potato. Gobi means cauliflower, so it's cauliflower and potato. This right here, that little sneaky thing, is leeks, carrots, and potato. She was just like, do you like leeks? And I was like, I've never had them. She's like, I'm gonna make you something. More aloo gobi and more veggies. And this looks like tofu, it's so funny, but it is eggplant, which I love. There's a little pepper here, some onions. That's a potato. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. And mom has got hers too. She put hers on a papadam. And Manju made sure to make us papadam with no oil. She roasted it, but I don't have papadam. I'm just doing this thing. 
and mom just made it very clear. It was off camera, but she holds up her wine, and what did you say? Those are grapes. You're basically having fruit salad for dinner. <laughs> All right, and then one of my favorite special occasion meals is my butternut squash risotto. Now, there's nothing in this meal that makes it special occasion -y. you know it's something that I could have every single day but you guys know me I'm all about keeping it simple I never am in the kitchen making recipes I'm just eating my potatoes my squash my Hawaiian sweet potatoes my grapes if it's easy that's the way I do it I never make recipes so for me to actually make a recipe is very special so I made my butternut squash risotto and my jackfruit crab cakes and that was so good making up some jackfruit crab cakes so I have some stuff in the food processor and then I have some jackfruit here that totally looks like tuna and it is totally not all right so I got my pans out ready for the jackfruit crab cakes the uh, sort of mixture is in the fridge right now it has to set in the fridge to you know harden up a little bit and then I'm also making some butternut squash squash risotto um, this is a recipe that I give out in my master's program it's one of my world famous recipes I actually brought along a bag of rice the amount of rice we would need and I and I brought along the exact spices that we would need because I didn't want to have to buy all of them here so we have everything all set up and then we just had to buy the mushrooms the squash and the onions and the parsley <laughs> um, all right guys the crab cakes are about to go in the oven I have to say I'm very impressed with myself look at this finished product we have the butternut squash risotto on the right given out in my program and then on the left we have some jackfruit crab cakes uh, looks so good and then we pretty much had sushi every other night all right guys check this out to check out this platter so here we got a veggie roll this is cucumber mango oshinko mushroom mango did i say mango maybe said mango twice yeah you know what mango's good got some sweet tater some spinach normally they deep fry the sweet potato but she was like i'll steam it for you <laughs> literally so nice um spinach the oshinko spinach and then a little bit of mushroom and they normally fry that too but she's like i'll steam it for you literally so nice and i always make sure to get the rice without the sushi vinegar so we're gonna have ourselves a little party yeah check this out guys on the house she's like it's healthy for you you'll love it <laughs> so cute and then other than that i was eating all my regular stuff i was eating my oatmeal banana and cinnamon my hawaiian sweet potatoes i was eating grapes and cherries and all of the stuff that i usually eat I was eating. The treat was that every night for dinner, I was able to sit overlooking the ocean with a beautiful plate of whole foods plant-based food in front of me that had me feeling amazing, not bloated. I was in a bathing suit. I didn't want to feel gross and bloated. I felt incredible on my run every day and it was wonderful. Okay, so we just went to the grocery store and just got a few things, honestly, just a few things. So we got some oats, got my peppermint tea mom got some sweet potatoes for herself she also got some plums and some blueberries for her oatmeal and then oh my goodness can we just how dark are these like can you believe this I could not believe it when I saw them and they're on sale for $2.99 a pound which is the perfect excuse to get an entire bag because these are just so dark oh so good they're gonna be so sweet and then we got some salsas oh and liquid aminos because we're gonna go for sushi tonight and i prefer to use liquid aminos as a po as a poised to soy sauce as opposed to soy sauce and the most important how can i forget ground cinnamon and i'm gonna have like oats and banana but i actually <laughs> i'll show you i bought bananas a week in advance so that they would brown for this occasion all right, now you're probably wondering what exercise did I do when I was on vacation? I run six miles every day on a normal basis and I've recently started doing weightlifting and some light abs. And by light abs, I mean I do a three minute plank and then I do like 30 little reps it's very, very simple, and my weightlifting is very straightforward too. Um, but I do want to make sure I have enough muscle mass to keep my bone density up, because as women, we need to make sure that we have enough weight on our bodies so that we don't get osteopenia, osteoporosis. So I started weightlifting a few months ago, very, very light, like I said, but I've heard that you don't need to do more than five pounds when you're weightlifting, so I just do very simple weightlifting, and I have built up some muscle mass from it, so I'm excited about it. Um, but that is to ensure that my bone 
bone density keeps up and I have enough mass on my body and I've made some gains no big deal but when I was on vacation did I do more exercise did I do less exercise I did everything exactly the same I did my six miles every morning I did my abs and my weightlifting and I felt incredible from all the food that I was eating the night before and it was so amazing to feel so energized and have so much energy my runs were such a breeze um, because I felt so great from all the food that I was eating all right, now let's talk about what I'm doing now that I'm back and what you can do when you get back from vacation. So when people get back from vacation, they tend to think, I need to detox, I need to do a juice cleanse, I need to go fully raw for three days, I need to do something, I need to do a potato diet, I need to do something. But that's actually counterproductive because that is gonna get you into the binge restrict on the diet, off the diet cycle, which we don't want you to be on. We don't want you to be on this roller coaster. So the best thing for you to do when you get back from vacation is to just get back with your whole foods plant-based diet doing what you were doing before remember we want to look at your diet with a bird's eye view we don't want to be up and down on this roller coaster and you don't need to detox we have a liver and kidneys built in to our bodies that do exactly that the cleanses the juice cleanses those are actually setting you up to most likely gain weight in the future because now you're on a binge restrict on the diet off the diet mentality very very stressful for your body to go from having so many calories to going to having no calories your cortisol levels are going to be through the roof which is going to make you store belly fat so we don't want you to do that we just want you to get back on the diet so your body knows it's still going to be getting consistent calories and your body doesn't go into the feast famine mentality and think oh I'm in a famine now I need to hold on to calories because I don't know when the next feast is gonna come also when I was on vacation I tried out my new hair straightener so I'm gonna insert that now all right honey so here's the dealio I'm getting ready for supper and my hair is yeah no I'm not wearing it like this but maybe I should okay so this is very exciting because I'm trying out for the first time ever the Duvole. Duvol, Duvole. I say it's Duvole because I am bougie, honey. I'm trying this out for the first time. I've been a babyless pro girl my entire life. Not really. I started out with Chi when I was in middle school, like every other girl who was born in the 90s. If you had a Chi hair straightener, comment below. Um, but I've had a babyless pro. I got one when I was a sophomore in high school. And so how old was I? I was a sophomore, 15. So I've had a babyless pro for nine years. And I was like, it's time for me to try out something new. So this is first impression. Whoa, look at that light it has. Oh, so cool. All right, let's do this thing. It's on like Donkey Kong. It's my first impression. Ooh, it grips the hair differently. Nice, nice. I'm happy so far. I'm happy so far. All right, let's keep on keeping on. All right, guys, the deed is done. And hey, I'm happy. I, uh, yeah, we're good here. And I'm, I'm very happy with this product. I'm feeling silky, I'm feeling smooth. It heats up really quickly. I'll recommend it, yeah. Link in the down bar. All right, let's go get some sushi, or some sush. Isaac Butterfield, don't at me. All right, my honeys, I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in my next one. Woo!